Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Ash here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm joined by Ryan Haberfield. Ryan is a professional session guitarist. He's toured around the world and he's played with some top artists in the pop scene, including Jesse J, Liam Payne, Ellie Goulding, Melanie C, Tiny Temper, and loads, loads more. So I feel really privileged to be able to sit here and talk to him about his career and get some advice from a specialist in the industry. So Ryan, how's it going? Thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Very well. How are you doing, Ash? You all right? Thanks so much for having me on the channel and hi to everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, no problem. It's my pleasure. So why don't you start off by telling us where it all started? At what point did you know that you wanted a music career? Um, did you pick up the guitar and you instantly knew or was it more of a gradual thing? Where did it all begin? Sure. So I started playing guitar probably after about nine or ten when I first picked up the guitar. I'd always been involved in music. I played in brass bands, believe it or not. My first instrument was actually the trombone, which is quite funny to think about now, but it really did help solidify a good foundation in music theory, especially reading and just, you know, get me into being involved in music. So when I picked up a guitar, yeah, I literally just fell in love with the instrument from a very young age. I really sort of started getting serious about it, probably around really young, 12 or 13. A bunch of my mates in school, we started a band. So from that kind of age, you know, I was in bands straight away. I was out gigging when I was 30, you know, down the local pubs doing gigs and that sort of stuff. So even from that age, I had this bug for playing live. And I sort of almost knew then, when I was sort of 13, I want to be a rock star. And in my head, I'm like, I want to be a rock star. And I kind of remember back being in school where you go for careers advice and, you know, you go to meet the careers officer and they sort of look at the grades and the, 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 the subjects you're studying. And they say to you, you know, what would you like to do? And my answer was always, I'm going to be a rock star. I'm going to play guitar for a living. So for me, it started very, very young and I was always very driven to do this as a career as well, so it's been with me for a long, long time. That's awesome. So from that point where you picked up the guitar um, up until now where you've played some ridiculous venues, you've played with major artists to the point where you don't have to look for any work anymore, the work comes to you. But it wasn't always like that, was it? So how, how did you deal with all of the setbacks and bad decisions, I guess, um, throughout that process? So that's a really good question. If you're going into any kind of industry with performance, if you're an actor or actress, if you're a musician, there's going to be setbacks. So if you're watching this and you want to be a career in some sort of performing arts, just prepare yourself that there will be knockbacks. You're not going to get every gig or every thing you go for. I mean, myself, I pretty much, I did loads and loads and loads of auditions and I didn't get any of them. I auditioned for loads of pop stars and never got a gig. So it was hard. I'm not going to lie and say it was easy. It was really, really hard, but you just have to know and to kind of have the belief in yourself. You know, if you've practiced a lot and you, you know, you know that you're okay at performing live and you've, you've got done a lot of gigs. Like I'd, I'd already gigged a lot by the time I sort of started to become a professional guitarist. I, I studied in university and then after that, so it's sort of early twenties when I, I sort of moved to London to pursue a career. So I knew, you know, I knew I was okay at guitar and I'd been out gigging and it's just having that belief. And also the thing to always remember, if somebody else has done it, you can also do it. So I've seen these other people playing with these pop stars, doing these gigs. And I thought, well, if they can do it, surely I can as well. So that's something I'd say for everyone watching this. If I can do it, you can do it as well. You know, I'm from South Wales. I, you know, played a lot in Wales. I just worked really hard, moved to London, didn't know anybody and managed to forge a career in music. So absolutely, if I can do it, so can you. Exactly. Yeah. I guess you've kind of, you've got to have that mentality where you just kind of pick yourself back up again and again. And it's the same, I guess, with, with acting, you know, you can have 55 auditions, fail them all. And the 56th one could be the one that just shoots your career in you know, a whole new direction. You've just got Absolutely. to, yeah, you've you got to have, have to keep, that kind keep of positive going. mindset. There's, it is, it's just, it's hard. It's all, it's all in your head, you know, it's just having a positive mindset and believing in yourself. Now there's yeah, there's a bunch of things you can see. There's loads of pictures I've seen on social media where you know someone's digging for gold and they get so far and it's just literally just one more one more dig and they kind of found the gold. For me, you know, I'm not going to lie and say it was easy at all. You know, I remember at a certain point in my career, I was sitting in a, my studio flat in West London. You know, it hadn't really worked out. I was maybe 24, 25, and I'd been at it for years and years. And I was gigging, you know, but I hadn't really kind of achieved what I wanted to just yet. 
and it was tough. I'm not going to lie. Not to say it was it was easy, but it's just that inner belief, and you will have those days, and it still happens now. You know, it's as much as I've sort of established myself enough that I do get work. There's still quiet periods, and even in those quiet periods, I still kind of question, oh, am I going to ever have any more gigs? But you just have to, you know, believe in yourself, and just yeah, keep that positive mindset with all of it. Would you say it's Would you say it's easier to become a session guitarist today? Or would you say it's kind of the, it was the golden age 15, 20 years ago when you were building your career as a session guitarist? Because obviously we've got so much more focus now on online and social media. Mm. People are building home studios and you can literally build a career from your bedroom. So sure. would you say it's easier now from your, you know, in your opinion? It, it's different, I think, is what it is now. And it's funny you say, you know, 10, 15 years ago, which is where I was starting off, I was chatting to the guys who were a bit older than me and asking them the same questions about, you know, the 90s and sort of the 80s, end of 80s. And I think with every kind of movement forward in time, we always look back and think, was it easier then? We just kind of have to adapt with what's around us. Now, it's very different. When I went out and I did a lot of networking, it was all face-to-face. -face. So the way I kind of generated work was jam nights, going to gigs, just trying to meet people and just play with different people and surround myself with musicians. So it was all done face-to-face. -face. There was no Facebook really at the time. There was definitely no Instagram. Um, there was no Twitter. I think I didn't join Twitter till about 2011. So I did all my networking in the mid-2000s where it was very much just, you know, what's your phone number and you ring people, go for a drink, hang out at gigs, that sort of thing. Whereas these days it is very much if you're at an event or at a gig, it's always swapping Instagram or Facebook. Social media is really, really important these days. So if you're looking to kind of build a career as a musician, get yourself a strong social media presence. You don't need hundreds of thousands of followers or anything like that, but certainly have enough videos on there of you playing, because guarantee it happens to me. If I meet someone for the first time who's a guitarist and they approach me and ask me about work, add me on Instagram, what's the first thing I'll always do is have a quick look through their profile, there's a video, but I did it to you, Ash. You know, the first time you contacted me, uh, you added me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and what's the first thing I do? Press play on the video, and it's like, ah, he's really good. So that is something we all do. So have a good social media presence. There's different ways as well to make money. Obviously, you can make money through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, online sessions. That kind of world is, it's a lot more of that these days. There's not so much the studio recording than there was. That's one thing that's very, very different. There's not that I'm going to go to the studio to record like there was 20 years ago. It's pretty non-existent these days. There are people still doing it. However, that's not how I make a living myself. Most of my career is live performance. So I, I kind of there's a lot of that around. So it's just different ways to build a career these days. So moving from the social media side of things into the world of touring and live performances. I was really curious to know, are artists ever particular about things? For example, are they specific about the gear you use? Or are they generally, are they generally quite flexible on the approach you can take as long as you get their sound? And do you ever have disagreements with artists and you have to compromise? Uh, not necessarily with the artists to do with gear as such. You know, most artists, as long as you're producing a good sound, I've not had any problems from that aspect with production companies and touring around the world you do have to sort of choose your gear wisely so you know if you're doing a lot of gigs where you're flying a lot so i've had that that sort of pop artists i've been playing with where have been a lot of fly dates obviously you can't be taking 4x12s and heads and massive flight cases and 300 guitars everywhere you go so you have to be a little bit choosy with things like that when it comes to actual sound specifics yeah i've had a few artists just mention there's parts that they don't like but nothing really that much what's interesting actually is a few artists i've worked with they actually get used to the sound so when i was playing with jesse J, I i had a martin hd28 that i use for a lot of acoustic shows and we did so many acoustic shows she really got used to the sound of that guitar i remember there was one day where i put my guitar it was a typical you know gun on a plane somewhere and i wasn't allowed to carry it on the plane had to go underneath and something happened in transit where the the pickup wiring got loose so the guitar didn't work so i had to go onto my spare anyway played the show the spare looked similar it wasn't it was the same guitar just you know they're all kind of vary from guitar to guitar and it was funny after the show she was like the sound didn't sound right and she knew that there was something up but you know there was something there but wasn't quite sure so they do tune into what you're doing and they do listen as well so 
but yeah, I've not had anything as in, you know, you can't use this brand of guitar, you can't use that amp from directly from an artist. They're more interested in artists, you know, how visually how you look on stage. You know, are you interacting with them? Are you bringing the right kind of vibe to everything else that's going on? That's normally what they care about more than the actual specific sound. That's really interesting because it leads quite nicely into my next question, which is <clears throat> how or what do you think is the most important when you're performing with these artists? Would it be stage presence like you talked about mm -hmm. sound or ability to play what would you say is the most important oh it's a really good question um obviously you need to be decent to get to that point so you know you're not going to have done no gigs ever before and be thrust on the stage and not be that great so already i suppose you have to be a bit accomplished to get to that point but i, I think probably from the artist artist perspective stage presence is very important you know if you stand there really stiff playing and you look like a you know scared cat in headlights like this it just doesn't look great and it doesn't feel great for the other people you're performing with i obviously like i've mentioned earlier on i i've done a lot of gigs so i was quite used to being on stage so i was i'm quite i don't find it uncomfortable i find it quite natural so that is something I always try to bring to every performance that I do is that element of stage presence and I try to add a bit of energy and a bit of vibe. So I think that that is quite important. Sound, yes, yeah, sound is important. You need a decent sound. But from an artist perspective, I'd say stage presence. From a general music perspective, it's probably sound. And then technique, you know, you don't have to be a mega shredder or anything like that to get gigs. You just need to be able to play your parts really, really well. In terms of stage presence, you know, is that mm -hmm. something that you've built up from your 20 plus years touring with artists or is there anything particular that you do to build the confidence? Because I know there's going to be a lot of session players out there um, yeah. or aspiring session musicians that lack, you know, in, in the stage presence and they're not that sure. confident playing big venues. So for me, I guess... What I did, I just did a lot of gigs. I mean, I've talking a lot of shows from, as I mentioned earlier, when I was about 13, I started gigging. So I was used to being on stage in front of people. So I'd say if, you, if you're worried, or you, know, you want to become a session guitarist doing say, you know, the pop thing, playing with pop stars and that sort of stuff, and you're scared about being on stage, you need to just start getting out there and performing in front of people and just start doing that a lot because that's the way you'll start overcoming the sort of the fear. The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll become at it. And it is, you know, it's nerve-wracking at first. Of course it is. Like getting up in front of on the stage in front of people and and playing, you know, you're always wondering what the audience thinks of you, but just one thing to remember is when you're playing in front of people, nobody wants you to do badly. You know, everyone's there to enjoy the experience. No one's kind of looking at you hoping you do badly. So I think that's, it's all kind of like a psychological thing of just knowing a few things are going to go wrong. Of course they are. You know, it, stuff happens in performance. We're not perfect, we're not robots. And that's some of the beauty about music is, the, you know, the, the things which are a little bit different. So that would be the first thing I'd say is just start gigging and just start playing in front of people. If it helps, you can almost adopt a sort of a, a stage character, if you like. I mean, I don't really do this. I'm definitely... I guess I get myself in a stage mentality, let's say. I don't really adopt a character. I know some people do that, like, you know, some artists and stuff. But for me, I almost have this sort of, you know, game time. Let's call it that. I guess it's the same as an athlete going in to play a sport. It's like, right, now it's game time. Here we go. And I just automatically get in this kind of zone, which allows me to perform, which has just come really from experience, you know. And it's, it's for me, I wasn't thrust, like I said, from practice in my bedroom onto a massive stage I did really gradually work my way up so that's why I'd recommend for everyone to start gigging the chances are you're not going to go from a local gig down the pub straight onto a massive stage it will be a gradual process and in that process you're going to build your stage presence and build your confidence as well do you still have to pinch yourself you know when you're doing these crazy these crazy venues because I was watching your performance of Rock in Rio with Jesse J 2015 yeah. and you just look so comfortable on stage and you're shredding these guitar solos, it looks awesome. Do you still have to, you. do you walk off stage and you think like, geez, that was, that was amazing. Like, you know, that was crazy. I can't believe I'm doing this right now. Yeah, it, I mean, I do, you know, very, very, very grateful and thankful for the things that I've done and I continue to do. It is, it, it was my childhood dream. You know, it's sort of, as I said earlier, when I was 13, I went into the careers office and I said, I'm going to be a rock star, you know, and that is playing on these big stages is something I've always wanted to do. And yeah, absolutely. Like there's a few pinpoint gigs which I can really stand at. There's one I did with Tiny Temper 
in about, I think it was 2000, end of 2010, beginning of 2011, Albert Hall, and it was my first gig with him. Mass, you know, Albert Hall was full, and that was a real, I can't believe this is happening, sort of moment. But what's interesting is the more of it you do, you just become comfortable with it. And I'm often asked by people, how do you get up in front of 60,000, 100,000 people and be comfortable? It's actually easier than you think. It's more nerve-wracking playing in front of smaller audiences. Like for me now, stick me on stage in front of 100,000, you know, 200,000 people, 60,000 at festivals, not a problem, I've done that so much. You ask me to play acoustic guitar in front of 10 people, or the one thing I always find the most nerve-wracking is if I ever get asked to play a bride down the aisle at the wedding, that, I find that terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Give me 100,000 people all day of the week than, the, rather than doing that. So it's interesting actually, I've always thought that myself when I was up and coming as a guitarist, thinking am I gonna be nervous in front of big audiences and it's actually the opposite. Right, yeah, I guess it's all relative, isn't it? Because I remember the first song that I learned all the way through, I think it was Wipeout, and yeah. um, I was super nervous to play it in front of my parents. And it's the same feeling when you, you know, you're playing a pub or you're playing at school, and then you just keep scaling it up and scaling it up sure. until, you know, like yourself, you're playing with hundreds of thousands of people. You know, it's the same, I guess it's the same experience, isn't it, really? Absolutely. You know, it's a great buzz. You know, I'm not, it is an amazing feeling when you're doing it and you look out and you see, see a crowd. It, it is amazing. But I, I, I don't really get nervous for that stuff. I've done, you know, live TV in front of big audiences. And that's, you know, most of the time as well, when you get to that point, say you're playing with a certain artist, by the time you get into the big stages on the live TV, you've probably practiced enough over your, over your life. You know, like for me, I started playing the guitar when I was about nine or ten, as I mentioned. Gigging since I was thirteen, I'd played a lot through my teenage years, been in multiple bands, involved in loads of different things. The big f the first time I played in front of a really big crowd, I guess over five thousand. I was twenty-eight, so I've been doing it for however many years, not far off twenty years of playing before hitting that point, and hundreds and hundreds of gigs. So it was I, I was prepared for it, you know. So to finish off this interview, I really wanted to ask you, Ryan. Do you have any advice for aspiring session guitarists out there? I know when I first spoke to you, I think it was last year I was studying at university and yeah. I reached out to you for some advice and you kindly agreed to jump on a call with me. We spoke for about an hour and a half and um, I learned so much from you. So what advice do you have for guitarists out there that want to do exactly what you're doing right now? Absolutely. Well, I'm glad the chat we had was helpful. So th there's quite a lot of things, but I'll try and keep this short and sweet. So first thing I'd say is one of the most important things for me when you get booked for gigs is number one, turn up on time. It seems kind of an obvious thing to do, but that is really important. Playing in time and turning up on time, are super important as a musician. So always be on time. That one, if there's nothing else you take from this video, just remember that, turn up on time. The second would be just be really prepared so no matter what you're going into doing, whether it's a small gig in a pub or whether it's a massive show, just be really, really prepared, be really thorough. Know your parts, know your sounds, know your gear. So just be over prepared if anything. Know, know what clothes you need to take. That is all part of preparation. So find out what the gig is about and take, take absolutely everything you need, spare guitars, spare leads, you know, that kind of thing, being prepared. Number three, would be just be a nice person to be around. I mean, I'm not really saying anything to do with playing there, but that is kind of really important. When you're touring, you're around people 24 seven. If you're doing a function gig, you're around people a lot. So being a nice person to be around, be chatty, be positive, you know, don't be negative and moaning about things all the time. Just be really positive and be like a nice person to be around. If, you, if you're that like that, you'll go a long way in this industry. Because like I said, when you're, when you're working, you're around people a lot. So they're not really playing things, but they are, I think, really, really important if you're looking to pursue a career in music. Of course. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Ryan. It's been a pleasure you're talking more with than you, welcome. as always. And yeah, thank you so much again for taking the time to do this. Really, really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I appreciate you asking me, and I hope that everyone gets something out of this. And it's been my absolute pleasure.